So the other day, one of the neighbors stopped by with a leatherworking job for me. And in this case, it's this um, belt axe hatchet. I think it's actually marketed as a tomahawk. Um, he got it from somebody, and he wants a better sheath for it because the one that comes with it is just some sort of cloth-covered plastic and rivets. And he also wanted me to wrap the handle in some sort of leather to make it a better grip on it because he thinks that this handle is just too small to really get a good grip on. So that's what I'm going to be working on today. Okay, as usual, we're going to start with a drawing, and I've already done some of it. I've already traced it out here on the paper. I started by tracing around the head of this axe, um, and then started adding on where I want my seam allowance to be and where I want spacers to be, and also where I want uh, a strap that's going to wrap around and be the closure for it. I added enough on there that I could put a belt clip on. So they can just clip on and off of a pack or belt or whatever he wants to use it with. The one trick on this was that I want this to be able to slide out and twist out. And with this point that comes up, it'd be real easy to get this locked in to where you can't get it in and out of it. So you have to leave enough room up on this upper side so that the whole thing, if it slides out, can clear the, get out the sheet. There. Uh, so this is going to be enclosed around the top of it and then down to this back side. It's going to hang down over this, but that's not going to actually be stitched shut. And then this is going to be what actually closes it in and holds it in place. It's going to be a short strap. It'll probably be shorter than this, but I'll cut it that long to start with and then trim it after I figure out how long it really needs to be. So that's our basic pattern and what we're going to work with. Okay, for the, one of these pieces, it's going to be exactly like this or close to like this. The other piece is going to be basically the same thing, just flipped over, and I'm going to uh, leave off kind of these two parts here. I'm just going to do kind of a nice even swoop across here. I'll just draw that in as I go. And I've got this chunk of leather is probably, it's thick, it's probably eight to nine. It's a good solid almost nine ounces of thickness, which is probably a little heavy for what I'm doing. But won't hurt and will probably be appreciated by the customer. I also need to remember that I need a spacer piece that fits this. So I need to mark one of those while I'm at it. Little bit of edge beveling, a little bit of stitch and grooving. Color it up. Maybe stamp something on it. We'll stamp something on it and then color it up. And then we'll go ahead and be ready to put it all together. Okay. Pretty simple. Bevel off the edges so later it'll be a little easier to slick things down. Some of these edges are gonna get sanded off after it's all stitched together though, so we don't have to worry too much about that.
We'll bevel them now anyway. But the ones we got to really worry about are right here, across this, and on the flesh side across through there. Because that's a place it will not be stitched together. Wherever it's going to be stitched, which is going to be wherever the spacer is, so up to about there, and all the way down to here. And put our stitching group in. And that gives you something to, as a target basically, you know where your stitches are. It also helps you when you lay out your pattern that you don't wind up wandering too far into some place that you're planning on stitching. Uh, and it sets your stitches down into the leather so that you have to wear away some leather before you can wear through the stitches. So it makes your item more durable in the long run. Alright, that's time to wet it down. Get ready to start stamping something on it. We're going to do the same thing with the back piece that we just did with this one, except I probably won't put a stitching groove on it. I'll just bevel the edges. And we'll use a wing divider. To set off our area that we're going to actually do our border stamping on. And for the design on this one I'm going to use what's actually referred to as an axe tool. It's a geometric design that gets repeated. And like a lot of these geometric designs it's mostly about laying out a straight line to start with. And then a trick on that is you can take and mark your top of your tool, which I don't know if the camera is going to be easy to see this with. I've got a black line marked where my center line is on the top of the tool. So I'm able to just line it up with that line real easily. And for the line we're just gonna go kind of straight with the spine of the axe and just do a real faint line scratched in there with a straight edge. Well, that is in the category of good enough, I think. It's not great. The lines are pretty straight this way, but they are not very straight that way. Still mastering that tool. And on a border tool, in order to get rid of my line that I've got drawn in there, I like to set the line on the very inside of the curve of the border tool, because it makes the impression. This is actually called the heel of the tool and the toe of the tool, usually. Sometimes people reverse that and call this the heel and this the toe. But anyway, inside this um, curve of it, that very top of that inside is where I'm setting it on the line. Now let's get these pieces colored up, and for that, I'm going to use some walnut oil dye on this. It's a nice color of brown. It actually comes out a real light brown. It's like my round knife sheets here. It goes on quite a bit darker than that, though. And 
Another one of my odd little tricks is I reuse daubers again and again and again for the same color dye. You can't really use them for a different color, but I just take a piece of half inch PVC pipe and tape it to the side of the um, container, whatever size it is, four ounce bottle quartz. Put some tape across the bottom of it, wrap it all on there, and then I've got a place to store the dauber on there and I just use that same one again. And that's the sheet done for this belt axe. Uh, next video, I'll show you how I'm going to, planning on doing the handle wrap. And for a little bit of a preview of that, we've got it on this picture that I'm going to put here at the end.